According to the World Health Organization, WHO, an estimated 600 million people in the world fall ill after eating contaminated food. That's an estimated one person in every 10, with about 420,000 die annually, resulting in the loss of 33 million healthy live years. In Mukuru Viwandani, a section of Mukuru Kwejenga informal settlement in Nairobi, we find Anwa Njiro, a food vendor who has been in this business for 10 years now. She cooks beans and gideri just outside her house. My customers like my food, they always come back. This business is challenging because sometimes the sun is too hot, sometimes the rains are too much and there's no drainage. Wanjiro is serving many customers, among them Charles Gidhenji and David Mwangi. The two live in this area and this is one of the places they purchase food from. Nisi kila pahali pia uneza patati chakula ni chafu. Kuna zile places the way uneza identify. Kai place. Ikona chakula we unaona inakuridisha. So mtu wanainanga kulingana na pali unaridika kulingana na ule usafi unaonanga kwa mtu. Unsafe food containing harmful bacteria, viruses, parasites or chemical substances causes more than 200 diseases such as diarrhea. There are thousands of food vendors in many slums in Nairobi, including Mukuru Kwa Jenga, Kibera, Majengo and even other slums across Nairobi. But the question is, who regulates these kinds of business? Children under the age of five years carry 40% of the foodborne disease, with 125,000 annual deaths. Patrick Njoroge works with Akiba Mashinani Trust, an affiliate of Slum Dwellers International. So no one regulates the vendors, so they do it among themselves. So mostly you'll find them, they have self-help groups. But why is the situation like this here? There's something that they suffer from called poverty penalty, where they are paying uh, more for services, yet the services they are receiving are of inferior quality. George Owino, a public health officer from the county of Nairobi in charge of Embakasi South, agrees. Obviously it's a big danger, and that's why you see we normally have a continuous outbreak of cholera, especially in those slum areas. The long-term solution to me, I think, is, uh, is uh, intersectoral collaboration whereby it is not left to be a public health issue. We bring everybody on board, including even the politicians. Mukuru has approximately 100,000 households. With such a big population and lack of proper sewerage system, roads and housing, it's only imaginable what can happen in case of a disease outbreak of fire. Give us a minor, Switch TV.